I'm going to be knitting, knitting 101. So if you don't know anything about knitting, if it's your first day, and then you're in the right place. And if you do know stuff about knitting and you just want to review, then that's great. Great too. Okay, so this is what we're going to learn to make. Once you learn how to do the knit stitch, you can make this fabric called garter stitch. I always think it should be called garter fabric instead of garter stitch, but they didn't let me name it. And so this cowl will be a great first project. See how nice that is. It makes a great gift. And the yarn we're going to be using today is available on michaels.com and it's hometown bonus bundle. And it takes just about this whole ball of yarn to make this cow. So it works out perfect. So it comes in lots of different colors. It's good to use a light color when you're learning because you can see what you're doing better. So get started here in just a few minutes, give everyone time to get in. Hi everyone, just a reminder that this class is also being recorded and it will be available to watch tomorrow on michaels.com slash classes. So you can feel free to just sit and watch right now if you're more comfortable doing that and you'll be able to replay it as many times as you need to tomorrow. We will be popping the handout for this class into the chat a few times over the course of the hour. And if you have any questions, please do use the chat because other people probably have the same questions and it's easier for us to keep track of there. All right, Darren, we should probably go ahead and get started because there's a lot to cover. Okay, yeah, we do have a lot to cover, so... Um, Maybe go ahead and put the view on my hands and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is just review a little bit quickly about yarn and the ball of yarn. Oh, so, Darren, lean closer to your mic, please. Okay, I'm on some Okay, so we're going to review this ball of yarn. There's a lot of information that's very valuable on here. This yarn is made by Lion Brand and available on um, either michaels.com or lionbrand.com. It's called Hometown Bonus Bundle. And there's also a hometown that has less yardage in it. So if, you, if you're buying the yard, make sure you buy the right one. If you buy the one that has less yardage, you'll need two. Um, we're going to look here at the yard. This one has 162 yards for 148 meters, whichever way you prefer to look at it. The washing instructions are very important. So this can be washed, um, no bleach, put it in the dryer, um, no ironing, and dry cleaning solvents are acceptable. But I always hand wash and lay everything. Aaron, sorry, your sound's still weird. Is it weird? Okay, it's better when you stay right there. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, it is 100% acrylic. Um, this number here is very important. Um, yarn is categorized from size um, zero up to size seven. And the bigger the number is, the thicker the yarn. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, the needle size is very important. It, it's the thicker the yarn, the bigger and thicker the needle should be. And this one is calling for a size 13 needle. You want to make sure you have the right size so that you are setting yourself up for success. If you're going to crochet, it's the same thing. You just look and see what size needle would be recommended. You can go up or down sometimes a needle size, depending on what you want. Um, the color of this yarn is called Houston Cream. And you do want to make sure if you're making a large project that you buy dye lots that are all the same. And then that way your color will be standard throughout your project and you won't have any um, sudden color shift. So that's important to look at. So that's a real brief introduction to the label. Um, it's a nice idea to keep your label and so after maybe you've watched your project a couple of times, just so you can double check and see that everything is working out fine, all right? So the first thing we need to do when we are knitting 
is we need to attach our um, yarn to our knitting needle. So I'm using a size 13 needle, which was recommended. I'm using these circular needles. I like to work with those. You can use straight needles. Erin, sorry, you're still fading in and out. In and out. Sorry. It was so good before, right? <laughs> yes. It We're working on a, a, it's a temporary setup for him. So we do apologize for the computer and everything in the view there. Okay. Is it wrong? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is tie a slip knot. And it's not really a special slip knot for knitting. So if you know how to tie a slip knot for crochet or for any other craft, it's the same kind of slip knot, same situation. Um, so you take your yarn and you fold it over like that to make a loop. And I like to do this one, which is called long over short. So you've got your working yarn, which is the long piece, and your tail, which is the short piece. So the long piece goes over the short piece. So the long tail goes, or the long, long working yarn goes over the short tail. And then you wanna make sure you're holding everything stable. You reach in that loop and go under it, grab your working yarn. Um, then you wanna hold the working yarn and the tail and pull up like that and it forms a loop. Now you know you did it right if it just pulls and goes away like that. So I'll demonstrate that one more time. So lay down your tail and it's important to leave like a six to eight inch long tail when you're working. Put your working yarn over the tail so it's long over short. You want to hold the tail so that nothing happens to it. And then you reach under the loop, grab your working yarn, and pull it through. Does that make sense to everyone? And there's um, videos online. You can look um, for more instructions on michaels.com or lionbrand.com. And this video will also be available tomorrow to rewatch. And once you've made your loop, you just pop that on your needle. And you cinch it up so that it's snug. You don't want anything to be too tight. So it should just be snug. Um, your stitches should slide on your needle nicely. So that actually counts as your first stitch. So once you get to this point, you've made one stitch. So we're going to cast on 20. I'm going to demonstrate casting on. We're going to do 20. And the cast on we're going to do today is called the knitted on cast on. There's lots of different ways to cast on. And we like this one because it's very similar to the knit stitch. So if you learn this one, it's good for almost all projects that beginners would make. And it's easy to learn. Once you learn this, you can also apply all these skills to the knit stitch. So using your finger to kind of stabilize everything, you want to enter the stitch, enter that loop going front to back, and you keep your needle on the bottom. So my left hand is holding my working needle, or my, the needle that's holding the stitches, and then my right hand doesn't have any stitches on it. So the right hand needle enters the loop, enters the stitch, and it always stays on the bottom. And you form an X. And then you don't want to knit with your tail by mistake. So you take your working yarn, you want to wrap around that right hand needle counterclockwise. So you're gonna go around the back, around the back, bring it across the front, just like that. Just, just, just one time around. And then you're gonna pull the right hand needle back through that loop and you're gonna be bringing up a new loop of yarn with it. And then we've got, that's gonna be our next stitch. And we're gonna put that on the left hand needle but we're gonna pick it up from the back and put it on this way. And then you just cinch up everything so that it's snug. And now we've got two stitches. So I'm gonna demonstrate that again. You enter the stitch going front to back, keeping the right hand needle on the bottom. Wrap the yarn going counterclockwise. And you're kind of scooping it. So the motion here is you're kind of scooping it back through. 
So you pull the right hand needle out. You can't just pull it straight out or nothing. You'll, you'll, it'll slip right off. So you're kind of scooping it. You, kind of scooping it. See how that brings that new loop right with it. And then we're gonna pick that loop up with the left hand needle from the back. And then that'll give us a nice stitch that's not twisted. How does that look? Is there any particular part of that that's tricking anybody up? So here's a little nursery rhyme that makes it a little easier to remember. You go, in through the front door, you run around the back, climb through the window, and then get in line, Jack. So Jack, get in line with the other digit. Okay, there's another way to remember it. So I'm a pacifist, I like the first way, but people that are more aggressive, there's this way, you stab it, you choke it, you pull up a noose, and then you strangle it again. But not too much, you don't wanna make it too tight. So all we're doing is just four simple steps. You enter the stitch, which is one, wrap the yarn counterclockwise, which is two. You bring that loop, Bring that loop back through, three, and then you put it on the left hand needle backwards, you twist it, and that's four. And then once you get good at it and practice it a little bit, it actually goes pretty fast. Okay, so that's the cast on. So if you know any friends that knit or if you've knitted in the past, you may have cast on a different way and there's lots and lots of ways to cast on. So once you get comfortable with this, you can always learn other ways. I'm splitting my yarn. So what's hard for me is I'm watching myself knit through my phone's camera. So it's a little awkward for me. I'm still trying to get adjusted to that. So I'm not really looking at my hands. So sometimes I struggle with that. Okay, how's that? Does that look good for everyone? Any questions, Claire? I think we probably need to run through again, starting with the slip knot. We'll do all it right. once more, and I think that's probably all we're gonna have time for. And we do have a couple of people asking about your needles, wondering if they have different type of needle in you, and what's up with that? Okay, yeah, these are circular needles. With circular needles, you can knit flat to make something like a scarf or you can knit in a tube to make something like a hat, which won't have to be seamed at the end. So circular needles are very nice. Um, you can certainly use straight needles for this project, which are not connected by the wire. They're just two separate needles. And I brought some, I was gonna use those at first, but it's just too cumbersome. They're too long and they're hitting my tripod and my computer and everything. So you can certainly use um, straight needles, it's just exactly the same, except they're connected by a wire. So these are not connected and the double pointed ones are connected. Okay, so let's start with the slip knot. So remember it's long over short. You lay your tail down and you wanna have about a six to eight inch long tail for finishing later. And then you wanna hold the tail and your working yarn to kind of hold everything stable or else sometimes everything will just kind of pull loose and you'll end up with nothing. You put your finger in the center of that loop and then you reach under, under the loop, grab your working yarn and pull it back through. Do that one more time. So you lay out your tail, that's the short. Your working yarn is the long, so it's long over short. Hold them both to keep them stable. Put your finger in the loop, reach under, pick up your working yarn. And it looks, I mean, it's so easy. Like when I do it, this is how I do it. Like I don't even know how it happens. I just put it in my hand, it turns into a slip knot. That's the fast way. And once you practice it um, a whole bunch of times, it'll be that easy for you. So most everything in knitting just takes lots of practice. Um, that's the 
hardest part for people to accept. You just have to keep practicing. The more you practice, the easier it will get for you. All right. So then you just pop that slip knot right on there and you put that needle in your left hand. And then you hold your tail out of the way. You don't, sometimes even the best knitter can knit with the tail by mistake. So if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. And then you take your right hand needle. And then you enter the stitch, you enter that slip knot. Your right hand needle goes through front to back. You take your working yarn and you wrap it counterclockwise. So if these were the hands of a clock and that's saying it's three o'clock. So if that's three o'clock, if you hold your hand at the three, hold your working yarn right at that three, three, two, one, blast off. So that's how you can remember counterclockwise. Three, two, one. But just remember you're going around the back and then you wrap it around your right hand needle one time. And so this motion, remember, it's not just pulling the needle back, it's more like a scooping motion. So you pull your right hand needle out, and with the tip of that needle, you're bringing that loop with it, and then you slide that to the top, pull up a loop just big enough to work with, and then we're gonna pick that loop up backwards. We're not gonna pick it up from the front. We're gonna leapfrog over it, kind of come back towards your thumb, and then scoop it up on the way back up. And then if it's too big, that's fine because we can just cinch it right up. And there we go. So in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, get in line, Jack. So he has to get in line with the other stitches. All right. Any particular step you want me to try to show closer? Where's that? Enter the stitch. Wrap the yarn. Bring that loop through to make a, a new stitch. And then get in line right there. How's that look for everyone? It definitely takes a lot of practice to get used to this, of course. It takes a lot of practice. Yes, especially if you're trying to also learn how to hold the needles and not keep those from dropping everywhere. And am I pulling too tight? Am I leaving these too loose? So it takes a lot of practice. And it does because it's hard to hold needle, two needles and yarn in your hands at the same time because it feels like you really need three hands. But um, if you practice a little each day, it before you know it, you, you start to develop the muscle memory and it'll actually become quite easy, but you do have to practice quite a bit. Okay, how's that look? I think that's good. We have had a couple questions about how you know that your stitches are the right size. Are they too big? Are they too loose or anything like that? So the shape of the needle the size of the needle is really what determines the size of your stitch. And so that's when I say you just want to pull them so that there's kind of snug around the stitch. They should be shaping around the, the needle. Um, one thing you want to make sure of, you don't want to shape your stitches here on the point of the needle. And then when you try to push them up to the fattest part of the needle, they'll be very, very tight. So see, I made mine really tight by doing that. So you want to just kind of shape them around the fattest part of the needle but you don't wanna get in the habit of pulling them like that because that's gonna to be too tight. They should be um, snug, but they should slide, they should be comfortable on the needle. Don't you think, Claire? Yeah, I that's, that's another thing that takes practice too. And yeah. going a little bit ahead, some people are just like naturally tighter or loose knitters, but for beginners, you're probably gonna be a little bit loose, a little bit tight, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yes. Yeah, so like sometimes it's, you wanna shape your stitches there, but make sure you're pushing them to the fattest part of the needle and that's where they're shaped. Okay, so let's move on to the knit stitch. So your pattern will tell you how many stitches to cast on, how many ever for the project. Um, once you've cast on that number of stitches, you're ready to start knitting. 
So um, it sounds really silly, but a lot of new knitters don't, um, they hold their needles like way back here, especially if they're straight needles. But if you watch how I knit, your fingers have to be down here at the points where all the action is, because you need these fingers to make things happen. So um, make sure that you're, you're helping yourself. And use your, your pointer fingers to kind of guard the tips of your needles so that um, your stitches don't fall off the end. So there's a couple different ways you can accomplish this. And I'm gonna maybe show you two different ways. We'll see how much time we have. Um, this is the British method. So you enter the stitch. It's very much like the cast on. So it starts out exactly the same. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring that loop through. So everything's just the same as it was. Now the next part is you kick that loop off and now we're, have, we're gonna maintain stitches on both needles. So you enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring that loop through, and then you kick it off the edge. And it's gonna feel like you shouldn't be doing that, but that's what we're, that's what we're doing. So here's the rhyme for that. You go in through the front door, run around the back, climb through without splitting your yarn, climb through the window, off jumps Jack. So one, two, three, four. You stab it, you strangle it, but not too hard. You bring up a noose and then you throw it off a cliff. So if you're not a pacifist, I'm a pacifist, so I don't, I like the more gentle methods. I think knitting should be more relaxing, but some other teachers are more aggressive, so we have to try to appeal to everyone. So you go one, enter the stitch. And it's also very important here, I wanna bring out this. When you enter the stitch, you keep your right hand needle on the bottom and you form this X. And once you form the X, you can put everything in your left hand and now your right hand's available to do other things. Um, so this is kind of where it comes into play where you have to hold two needles and a yarn. So you can hold both needles in your left hand. And now my right hand is available to wrap my yarn. So I wrap my yarn and then I bring my loop through and then take it off the end. So you enter the stitch, make an X, wrap your yarn. So put everything in your left hand and then wrap your heart yarn with your right hand around that needle going counterclockwise. Bring that loop through, take it off the end. Now one question new knitters usually have is what do you do to the last stitch? So the last stitch wants to be treated just like everybody else, right? So we're going to treat every stitch just the same. So you go in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, off jumps Jack. So now all of my stitches are gone from my left hand. All of the stitches are now on this side. So I'm gonna put these stitches in my left hand and I'm gonna put my empty needle in my right hand. And then what I like to do here is just take a second and look at my work. And if you give everything a little, just a little gentle snug, you see how that kind of lines everything up nicer. Um, this last stitch usually does look a little big and wonky, but after you knit a couple up above it, it'll straighten out. You'll kind of be surprised. So sometimes your stitches will all be twisted up on your needle like this. You just want to line them up nice so you can see what you're doing. And then you're just going to start again. And this is why knitting so relaxing because you, you're just doing the same thing over and over. And once you get used to it, um, it becomes very relaxing, almost like a meditation. So you wrap your yarn, bring it through, transfer it over. So one, make the X, put everything in your left hand, 
And now my right hand is available to use to wrap my yarn. Wrap my yarn, put my needle also back in my right hand, kind of guiding things where they should be with your fingertips. Scooping that strand of yarn through to create a new loop and a new stitch. And then that old stitch, we just kick it right off. And this is the knit stitch. And then after you get really comfortable with the knit stitch, you can learn the purl stitch, and we'll do that in the next class. And then you'll be able to create lots and lots of different textured fabrics. How does that look? Any questions, Claire? I think a lot of people are, you know, trying to figure out, again, this is all about uh, practicing and things. We did have some discussion on what type of ne needle material is best for beginners. Um, that's a controversial topic because I, I would say I personally like wooden needles because they're not slippery and it's a little easier to control your yarn. Um, other people, other teachers would say plastic or metal are better because they are slippery and it's easier for students to, to knit a little faster. So it really depends on the student. What do you think, Claire? What would you recommend? I would recommend wood or plastic. I think metal is just a little bit too slippery and sometimes your needle will just fall right out of your stitches and then you're in a panic. Yes, and if that happens, you will be in a panic, but um, sometimes you can just slip the stitches right back on. Like if something like that were to happen, sometimes you can just pop them right back on. Um, or sometimes they unravel and it's just a big mess. Okay. And then someone caught on that you had mentioned that this was the, the British or English way and wondered how that was different from continental. I okay. don't know that we have time to really demonstrate both, but basically with English, your yarn is in your right hand. Continental, your yarn is in your left hand. So I'll just do a couple. So it's the same thing. You enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring the yarn through, transfer it over. But you see how I'm guiding my yarn with my finger. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn. Technically, you don't wrap the yarn, you pick up the yarn with the needle, but the yarn is the same end result. If you wrap the yarn, or if you pick up the yarn with the needle, and then bring it through. I don't knit continental normally, so at I don't do it really fast, but if you do knit continental normally and you're good at it, it can be very fast. That's, the, I think, the main benefit from it. This is how I knit. I do it a weird way. I wrap the yarn with my left hand, which is how I taught myself to knit 15 years ago, and it's just the way but because I'm wrapping my yarn the right direction and doing everything right, it's fine. So there's lots of different ways to achieve the same end result. Yeah, there's a million different knitting styles, but as long as you're wrapping the yarn the right way or and you're getting the, the stitch form the correct way, then who cares how you knit? Yeah, and you can try different ways. Okay, so you see I'm making this little piece of fabric. So this is a little piece of knitted fabric because I'm knitting every stitch on both sides, front and back, I'm making a fabric called garter stitch. And it's, it's a nice fabric because it's reversible. It looks the same on both sides. Okay, so any questions about any of that? We're about halfway through the class, everybody. And of course, another reminder, this is all being recorded, so you can watch it tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes, and you can pause and rewind as many times as you need to. The one thing I want to show you then, we'll keep moving on, is um, what happens if you do need to join a new ball of yarn. So eventually you're going to run out of yarn, or if you want to change colors to make a, a stripe, it's the same difference. So I'm gonna cut this yarn just so I can join a new ball of yarn, just to show you. So um, people try to make this into a big deal and you always feel like it's gonna be a crisis and people try to give you all kinds of instructions. But the main thing to remember is it's super easy. So the way I like to do it, so this is my old tail and there's not enough yarn here to knit with. So I'm just gonna hold it out of the way. 
So all I'm doing is just holding that out of the way so I don't knit with it by mistake. And this is my new yarn. And I need to leave a tail that's about six to eight inches long for finishing later. So I'm not gonna knit with this tail. So I'm just gonna hold it out of the way. So I hold both of those strands of yarn together. I'm not gonna knit with them. I hold them out of the way so I don't knit with them by mistake. See, nothing fancy. I'm just holding them out of the way. And then you hold this new, this is my new working yarn. You hold that right where your working yarn should be to make it convenient. And then all you do is you enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring that loop through, transfer it over. See, that sounds exactly like the knit stitch. It sounds like we're not doing anything fancy or complicated because we're not. So you'll try to do this later and you'll be like, I can't remember that trick he showed us. I can't, I'm just, I can't remember what he said to do. That's because there's nothing to do and there's no trick. You just pick up your new yarn and start working with it. So try to keep things as simple as possible. But sometimes people will say you should knit with both strands held together for four, three or four stitches, but that, that's a, sometimes that can cause trouble in the long run. Some projects that's okay, but sometimes it's not gonna be okay. And then once you get to the end, end of that row, so you treat the last stitch just like the other stitches. So the one problem you're gonna have is, you're gonna have these two strands that aren't attached to anything. And if you're not careful, they can become very loose and that can affect your gauge later on. So what I like to do is I'll tie these in a, in a temporary little bow that I can untie later. But in the meantime, that'll keep my tension even. And then later on, when I wanna weave these ends in for finishing, it's easy to untie. So do you do anything like that, Claire? Or how do you handle yours? Yeah, I usually, I don't usually use a bow because I don't like all that extra flopping around, but I'll just tie an overhand knot. And then when I'm a little bit farther into the project, depending upon how many colors, I'll come back and weave those in. It's always a good idea to weave them in as you're working because um, you don't want to have a thousand ends to weave in at the last when you've finished your work. So it's a, it's a nice idea to weave them in as you go. Once you've knitted a couple of rows, like Claire said, and you're sure everything's right, you can weave them in because if you have to rip it out and you've woven in your ends, it does make it a little harder. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to end your work. So you can't just take this off of your needles, um, otherwise it'll unravel. So we have to bind oh, these together. One, one oh. quick question, Darren, while we're okay. still talking about ends, how long should you leave that tail to weave in? Oh, I, I would recommend about six to eight inches. You don't want to make it too long and waste yarn, but you don't want to make it too short so that you run out of, you want to leave it long enough to work with. So yes. like four to eight, that's like six to eight, five inches, something like that. So it's probably best. So now the bind off is very, very similar to the knit stitch. It starts out exactly the same. So you basically, you just really do a knit stitch. That's the start of my bind off. You have to do two knit stitches. It's always worked in groups of two. And so what's gonna happen is this, this, this first one, so one and two, the first one is going to, we're gonna pick it up and it's gonna leapfrog over the second one. So you kind of hold it in place and it jumps off the edge of the needle and now I'm down to one. And so it's not gonna unravel because you can see that, that stitch, that loop is looped around that one. So that's gonna keep it secure and hold it in place. And so I need to work on my bind off in groups of two. So I have one stitch. I need to knit one more. So just the regular knit stitch, just like normal. So I have one and two, one and two. You enter the stitch with your needle you can hold that one in place to keep it secure. You wanna kind of stretch it, um, it leapfrogs over. Leapfrogs over, jumps off the end of the needle 
and now I've got two bind offs. Um, you want to do this loosely because sometimes it does tend to get very tight and it can affect the way your project feels at the end, especially if you're binding off the edge of a, like the neck of a sweater or a sock or something that needs to be a little stretchy. You don't want it to be so tight that you can't wear it comfortably. And you can rewatch this video. It's going to be available tomorrow on michaels.com. So is this making sense to everyone? You just do normal knit stitch. It's just normal. And you can do this with your finger. When I first started doing this, I would just use my finger. So you pinch that with your finger. It leapfrogs over and it's an important, it's nice to hold that in place so that it doesn't push off by mistake. So hold that in place with your finger. It leapfrogs over and drops off the edge. So you do a knit stitch. And then it leaps. Sometimes it's easier with your finger when you're first learning. Well, I remember when I was learning, that's how I did it. It just seemed easier for me. And if it's easier, if anything's easier, I go with easier. Okay. Now we only have one stitch left to knit. So we're going to knit that last stitch. Now I have no more stitches. I'm going to bind off my last one. And this is kind of important that you do it the right way. So you cut your yarn. Again, we're going to leave a nice long tail so that we have plenty for finishing. And then all you do here, nothing fancy, you just pull this straight up until that tail comes through. And now that last stitch is not going to unravel because that yarn tail is through it. And so what we'll do is we'll weave, when we weave that in, and I'm going to demonstrate that, that we'll kind of pull that into place and everything will be fine. So if this were a project that I was making, it could be like a piece, piece for something you're going to sew onto something else later. You have to weave in the yarn you started from the beginning, my cast on. If you've added a new ball of yarn or if you've changed colors, you'll have two ends to weave in there and then your bind off. So you're gonna usually have two ends to weave in on each project, your start and your finish, and then maybe other ones in the middle if you add yarn or change colors. Okay, so any questions about finishing and ending it? I'm gonna show you how to weave in those ends. Anything else, Claire, we need to? I think probably most people are still like, wait, I'm getting the hang of the knit stitch. But remember, this is, we're going to record this. We're trying to get through everything in that handout we emailed to you or that's in available to the chat. So there's a few extra things we're going to squeeze in. And then if we have time, we can go back and review some basics. And if anyone's getting really getting a good handle on the knit stitch, they're doing excellent because it does take quite a bit of practice. Okay, so um, we're going to review the pattern for the cow, but I just want to show you a little bit about finishing. So when I knitted the cow, when I was wearing it, you could see it was a circle and it was connected. But when we make it, we make it flat and then we're going to seam it together. So that's one end, knit all the way across until we get to the other end. And so when we sew this together, you want to line it up very nice like this. Now the cowl, the one that we're, the instructions will tell you to put one twist in it. And the way you put one twist in it, it's very easy. You just, you just do that. So you lay it out nice and flat. Sorry, the screen's kind of small. So there's no twist in it. You lay it out perfectly flat, nice. And then you just put one twist in it like that. And then that will give you that Mobius twist, okay? If you don't like that, then you don't have to do it. That's the best part about knitting is you can do, you can do anything you want. You can change it to suit your needs the way you would like. And so now I'm gonna show you a quick seaming technique. And there's actually two different ways you can do it. Or more than two, really. There's lots of different ways. So what you want is um, a large eyed blunt needle 
and it's just a needle that has a large enough eye to put yarn through and it's not sharp, it's blunt because we're going between the strands of yarn, we're not piercing them, okay? And sometimes it's easy if you use a piece of paper. So you can wrap your yarn around a piece of paper. It's just kind of like a shoelace, right? And then you put that through. See how easy it is to thread that way. So it makes it nice and easy to thread. So this is our cast on and our bind off, bound off edges. So it's the beginning and the end, and we're gonna sew them together. And when you're seaming, people get very nervous about it because maybe they don't know how to sew, but it's actually quite easy to sew knitted things together. Knitted fabric is very forgiving. Um, you wanna make sure that you're sewing, your stitches are the spaced apart the same and they're going the same depth each time. And then that'll give you a nice seam. And if you seam it and it doesn't look nice, you can always take it out and try it again, okay? Um, one thing I do recommend, I don't have clips with me now, but um, you might wanna put a clip on the end and a clip in the middle so that when you're sewing it, it doesn't stretch and then you get to the end and you have a situation like that, then you'll have to start over. Knitted fabric is stretchy, so you do need to be careful. So if you put a, kind of put a clip on each section to kind of keep it together, so you take your needle and if you look along here, you can see these shapes, these like little V shapes. So I like to sew in each one of those V shapes. So I'm gonna do the first couple and then I'll show you where I'm going. So you can do the whip stitch. So you go through and then you bring your needle back over so you're always entering through the same side. And you kind of guide that with your hand and make sure it's going right. And then you jump back over. So you're always entering through the same side. That's the whip stitch. Don't get your scissors tangled up in it. That's not good. Okay. And then you wanna make sure you're pulling it snug, but not too tight. All right, so if you see here, you can see these shapes. So one, two, three, four. You can see how those shapes look different or, or individual. They're all the same, but they're all kind of individual. And then you go through here. I'm picking up one strand of yarn and then I'm picking up two. So I'm not going deep down into my project. I'm just picking up two strands of yarn and then on this side, see how I'm picking up one strand and then two strands. So I'm just, that, that, that way I'm always gonna be going the same depth. So I'm not gonna get crazy stitches. So it's a good way to help you space out your stitches. Okay. And then you jump back over and you enter at the same side. So, so now I'm gonna go through this one. And then the next time I'll go through this one. So you can see how, how they all kind of line up nicely. So I'm picking up just two, two strands of yarn and over here, so one strand, two strand. And so this is called the whip stitch. And um, the distinguishing factor of the whip stitch is you're always entering it from the same side. I like to use um, a running stitch, which you kind of go back and forth. So you enter it. And there's probably lots and lots. If you talk to 10 knitters, you might come up with 10 different ways to seam. So this is the way I like to do it. I feel like it gives me a better seam, but some people think it's too bulky. There's you know, pros and cons to each, each way. So see how you're just going through, pulling it through. And if you get crazy and you pull it really tight, um, all you have to do is kind of massage it back out. Just kind of give it a little bit of a, and it'll be fine. All right, so that's seaming. You just go all the way across until you get to the other end and you wanna make sure you're matching the corners up nicely. And I switched, I started with a whip stitch and I changed it to the running stitch. You would wanna, of course, do the same stitch all the way across. You wouldn't wanna change it halfway through. 
but I just wanted you to see two different ways. Any questions about that, Claire? Are we understanding that pretty well? I think we're okay on that. Uh, oh, someone just asked about uh, crocheting the ends together, if you know how to do that. Um, I feel like that might give a bulky seam. Um, it's certainly a good way to do it, um, depending on how you want it, you know, how you want it to look and the project. Again, if there's probably a there could be hundreds, there's hundreds of different ways you can seam something together. But if somebody doesn't know how to crochet, then, you know, then they'd have to learn how to crochet to do that. So, but this is just a very, very simple way. Um, you could crochet them together and that would also be very nice. Um, you just want to make sure as you're going across that your corner ends together. You don't want to stretch your fabric out and then get across and have this end ending here and that's not a good day, right? You're gonna to have to take it out and redo it. So if you kind of manage that as you're going with some clips or something, you can just use clips like you hold a potato chip bag closed. Um, they make special knitters clips you can use, but you, know, you can use whatever your clothes pin would work, um, anything like that. All right, so just for the sake of argument and saving time, let's pretend I, I seamed the entire edge. So. I'm done with my seaming. And once you bring this seam all the way across, and then here's my working yarn that I used for my seaming, you would wanna cut it, leaving an eight inch long tail. Um, and then we're gonna weave that in. And I'm gonna demonstrate weaving in the ends with this other one. So this is my cast on tail and the other one was my bind off tail. Um, you would have to weave both of them in exactly the same way. So you Threading my needle. Use my paper again. Sometimes the yarn kind of frays and gets a little, a little out of control. This is a pretty handy trick, though. Okay, so you, okay. So I'm gonna pick this up so that you guys can see. So if you look at the fabric you can see how it creates these um, kind of horizontal rows. And whenever I'm weaving in my ends, I like to try to look at my fabric and kind of see which way the stitches are moving and kind of mimic that so that I, you don't want this to show up. You want it to look pretty invisible. So I'm gonna use these um, horizontal rows to hide my ends when I weave them in. So I'm gonna go through this one just under there and I'm gonna to go to the next one up. So you know, nothing fancy. And again, you don't wanna pull anything tight. Um, you wanna do this on the wrong side or the inside of your work. Um, garter stitch is reversible, but you would wanna weave it in um, right next to the seam so that the seam is on the inside. So this is also kind of hidden. So if you look at these stitches, they kind of look like little C shapes fitting together. So that looks like a frown and that looks like a smile. So you can kind of see how, how they kind of fit together. So they go like, like a wavy line. So I'm gonna mimic that wavy line to hide my ends so that they can't, they don't really be seen. Okay, so I came up, so I'm gonna go down. So you're always kind of going into the convex side of the C. I'm sorry, the concave side of the C. So you're going to go in the opening, so that way. And then back down. So you're always going underneath. You're always hiding your um, end underneath. You don't want to do like the whip stitch and always enter from the same side or else you're going to have a strand of yarn you know, coming over your stitch. So you're always hiding your strand of yarn underneath. And so the trick with this is, is you want to go across about maybe four inches, three to four inches, maybe five inches. And then you want to go one direction and then you want to go back the opposite direction. So you're going to go up to the next row. So see how I'm just sneaking up to the next row. And then I'm I'm going to do the exact same thing, only I'm going back the other direction. And when you change directions like that, it kind of locks it in place. 
and it's not going to unravel. So this is the best way to finish your work. You don't want to tie any knots because if you tie knots, knots come untied and then your project will unravel. I can't tell you how many projects people have brought me that their mother made or their grandmother that the knots unraveled and I brought them in to be repaired. So you don't want to have that happen. Um, and then you just kind of stretch them out like this. That's not going to be ever come undone. And then you just kind of pull it a little bit, snip it off close, and then that end will just disappear right in there. And that's how you weave in your end. And you would do that, so if we go back to our piece we were learning on, you would have to do that to your bind off, um, both of the ends where you added the new yarn and your cast on. And if you were changing colors, you would weave in each um, yarn on the same color so it's really hidden. So you would weave in the new one on the new color and the old one on the old color. If you were changing colors. Any questions about the weaving in at the end? I think we're good on that. And we've got about 10 minutes left in class. So I say if we want to sort of speed read through the pattern and then if we've got time to demonstrate the cast on and the knit stitch again, I think that would be appreciated. So it, it is quite an easy pattern. Um, um, just with the materials you need. This is a pattern that was written for a different yarn that is actually discontinued, but the yarn we're using in class today is Hometown Thick and Quick. Um, or hometown bonus bundle, which is a thick yarn. So it's the same size. This was Heartland Thick and Quick. Um, we're using hometown bonus bundle. And this calls for two balls of yarn because it was a smaller yardage. Um, the hometown bonus bundle, one ball will do the cow. You'll have just a little bit left over. Um, this one's calling for a size 11 needle, but the yarn we're using calls for a size 13 needle. So that's why I chose a 13. So I think this is a good example of you don't have to do everything you're told, right? So just because they're suggesting certain things, you can change that and, and do um, kind of what's going to work with what you have. I don't like to be told what to do and I barely take suggestions. So that's that. Um, gauge is very important. It becomes more important later on. This just means that your stitches are the same size as the designer stitches. And that means your project will be exactly the same size. If your stitches are a little bigger, then your project will be a little bigger. And for a cowl, that's, that doesn't make any difference. It'll be all right. So this one, it says cast on 28 stitches. So we reviewed that. Work in garter stitch, which means knit every stitch on every row until the piece measures about 32 inches from the beginning. So you just lay it out flat and measure it. And then you bind off, you cut your yarn, leaving a 20 inch long tail. And that's the tail that we're gonna use for seaming. So you wanna make sure you don't cut that tail too short. You may wanna give yourself a little extra. And that's it. All you do is you cast on 28 stitches, you knit every stitch until it's 32 inches long and you bind off and that's, it's that simple. And for finishing, we thread the tail onto a blunt needle you twist the cowl once, and I showed you how to do that. You just twist it one time or not, depending on your style. And with the tail, you're gonna sew the cast on and the bound off edges together um, using the whip stitch, or you can use the running stitch, or if you know how to crochet them together, that would also be nice. And that's it. And then you just weave in all of your ends and, and you're done. So a lot of people really feel like knitting patterns are too complicated to read, and sometimes they can get very complicated, but um, beginner patterns are actually not so bad. There's a lot of information on here, which can be overwhelming. So you can just take a post-it note and just put it on the line you're doing. And then every time you do a new, finish that line, you can just move it down. And that way you're only looking at what you need. You don't have to be looking at all this all the time because you don't need that as you're working. Any questions about the pattern? And this pattern's available on lionbrand.com if you didn't get a copy. And this is what it's called, the Lion Brand Heartland Thick and Quick Knit Level One Cow. If you wanna get that, and there's the number. You can type, also type that number in. 
Okay, did we want to review the cathlon or the... I think if we can review the cathlon and the knit stitch, and we might run over a little bit, but again, if anybody needs to run, this class is being recorded and will be available tomorrow at michaels.com slash classes. Put the slip knot on your needle. Snug it up just so that it's a little snug. You don't want it to be too tight. There's a cast on. It starts out just like the knit stitch. You enter the stitch and make the X. You hold everything in your left hand and then your right hand is available to do other things. You take your working yarn in your right hand. You wrap your right hand needle going counterclockwise. And then you're bringing that yarn back through. It's more like a scooping motion. And then you're picking it up backwards. Put it on like that. Enter the stitch, make the X. The X makes it very easy. Hold everything in your left hand, wrap your yarn with your right hand, bring that loop through, transfer it over. In through the front door, run around the back, Climb through the window, get in line, Jack. Okay, we ready to see the knit stitch? So the knit stitch starts out exactly the same. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring that loop through, and then you transfer the stitch over. So now you're maintaining stitches on both needle. Okay, so you want to make sure you're not going to let them slip off. Use your pointer fingers to kind of control them. So in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, off jumps Jack. And then you keep going till you finish your row. And then you treat the last stitch just like every other stitch. And also remember, um, sometimes new knitters Feel like they need to cast on again for some reason, but you only do the cast on one in each, usually in each project. You only sometimes in the advanced projects, you might have to cast on a, a couple extra stitches here or there for some reason. But for these projects, you only cast on one time, and then after you've cast on that one time, you don't have to cast on again. You just knit the rest of the way. That sets your foundation, which determines how wide your piece is going to be. And then when you add knit stitches, that determines how long it's going to be. Anything else? Oh, let's see here. We had a lot of, a lot of people thanking for the class because we're a little bit close to the end here. Um, yes, so this was, we just did the cast on, which is the part that you only do once. And you will repeat those steps until however many stitches your pattern tells you to. So for like the cowl we demonstrated, we read through quickly, it would say cast on 20 stitches. No, it's 28 for the cowl actually. Oh, sorry, 28, whoops. <laughs> yeah. But you can cast on 20 if you wanna make your cowl much more narrow and that's your choice. That's a decision you can make and you may be happy about that or sad about that later, but you know, that's, that's the, you can always make design choices. All right, so I guess that's all. Um, if you, yeah, just you can watch the video online tomorrow if you have additional questions. You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is, um, it's Mr. Wooly Bear. It's M-I-S-T-E-R, Wooly Bear. So I'll spell it out. And you can find me on Instagram and you can send me a direct message if you have questions. And I'll try to answer, answer a few questions here and there if you have questions. All right, anything else? Uh, we did have people ask you about our next class. I wanted to let everyone know that uh, next Monday, that's August 17th at the same time, 3 p.m. or sorry, 3 p.m. Central time, <laughs> we will be teaching how to purl. So that is gonna be knitting 102. And you can sign up at michaels.com slash classes. And once you know how to do the purl stitch, we're gonna review the pattern to make this hat. Is it on my yes. 
is the view on my face now? I don't know, I can't it is. It. Yes, you're modeling yeah, so that hat wonderfully. <laughs> you'll be able to make this hat and then you'll have a matching cowl and you'll be very stylish. And we're going to do a knitting three. And it seemed like a really big jump, but actually it'll, you'll be, it'll just be the right pace. You'll be able to make these mittens after you take knitting three. And so, yes, knitting three will be on the 24th. So it's three Mondays in a row. So you'll have plenty of time by fall and when, before it gets cold to make hats, scarves, and mittens for all of your friends. Yes, just remember to practice in between. That's the key to learning. Yeah, it takes lots and lots of practice. It really does. I always recommend practicing a little every day, like 15, 20 minutes every day. And before you know it, your, your hands will start remembering the motion. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pop the handout in the chat one more time before we go. And again, starting tomorrow, it's going to be about 24 hours from the start of this class. The recording will be available at michaels.com slash classes. Um, handout is in the chat now. If you just want the pattern, that's available on lionbrand.com. It's just level one knit cowl. And hopefully we will see a bunch of you next week for Knitting 102. I hope you enjoyed the class. Thank you. Thanks for coming.